In this session, I'd like to speak about Psalm 2. Now, Psalm 2 is the second of the introductory psalms for the book of the Bible. And we know it's, this, it's part of the introduction because Psalm 1 begins with the word blessed and Psalm 2 ends with the word blessed. Sort of a frame to bring these two psalms together. Now, the editor who put these two psalms together probably realized that they were written about very different topics. Psalm 1 was the wisdom psalm written around the time of the Babylonian exile, around 550 BC, whereas Psalm 2 is one that deals with a monarchy, and it was written much earlier, possibly in the days of King David or King Solomon, around 950 BC, about 400 years before Psalm 1. Psalm 2 begins, Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed. Notice it's talking about a rebellion. In the ancient world, when did rebellions most often occur? With the death of a king. So it's very possible that this psalm was written around the time of the death of David, just before Solomon has taken the throne. The pagan nations that are vassal states have used this as a time to rebel against Jerusalem. And what is the psalmist saying? They don't have a chance because God has anointed the king as his viceroy. In fact, in this psalm, it'll even say his son. The priest proclaims that message when he says, you are my son, today I've begotten you. Now being Christian, we most often apply that to Jesus. These are the words that God the Father said when Jesus was baptized. We hear that in the Synoptic Gospels. But originally, these words were intended for the king. He was considered the adopted son of God, the viceroy of God upon the earth. And that's why his role is so important. To rebel against the king is to rebel against God himself. In the 14th, 15th, 16th century, we had a sense of that with the divine right of kings, that the kings were even anointed with a ceremony that was loosely based upon the ordination of a priest because they had both priestly and kingly authority. Well, in this case, the king has the authority of God himself. In fact, he's told that he'll be given an iron rod. Now, the word rod could mean staff, but in this case, it's made of iron. And what is the king supposed to use it for? In front of him are placed ceramic bowls, vases. And on each of them is the name of one of the enemies of Israel. He's supposed to go up and smash the pottery. This is what are called execration texts, a cursing text, almost like voodoo. You know how in voodoo you take a, a wax doll and you put a, a pin in it and it somehow is supposed to affect the person who is represented by that wax doll. Well, in this case, the nations surrounding Israel would be destroyed through the power of this symbolic action. What's interesting is that the earliest mention of the nation Israel is found on a piece of pottery found in Egypt that the Pharaoh had smashed. So even, even in Egypt, they were using execration texts. What is God's reaction to this rebellion? He laughs. These people have no standing. They have no power. They can't possibly win. And when I say they can't possibly win, they can't win against God, but they can't win against his anointed. They're going to perish in the way, but those who hold to the Lord will be blessed. Blessed are those who take refuge in God. Now notice Psalm 1 was a wisdom psalm. To whom did it refer? To everybody on earth. Whoever studies the law, meditates on it, will be blessed. Psalm 2 is a monarchical psalm dealing with a monarchy. To whom does it refer? To the hierarchy. It's kind of like talking about the church. Is the church the people of God or is the church the hierarchy, beginning with the Pope? And the obvious answer is yes, both of them. And that's what these two psalms together are telling us, 
that God has chosen everyone, but God has also chosen particular individuals to guide his people. And it's not that one takes away from the other. Both are blessed. By realizing that, that gives us a good introduction for the rest of the Psalms, which help to instruct us on the ways of the Lord.